Hello again. I, I hope you missed me. <laughs> <laughs> this time I brought a friend. Uh, so, welcome to the Sparkle Party. Um, hello, I guess I already did that part. Yeah. Let's start out with some quick intros. So... Hi, I'm Yun. I'm a graphic designer, um, mostly focused on UI, UX, but I also love illustration and motion design. And I work at G. Skinner, which has spent the last 20 years building cutting-edge digital experiences for smart clients like NASCAR, Disney, Google, and Adobe. And we've done that on every platform that you can imagine, like from CD-ROM, web, AR, VR, um, consumer robotics, and of course, mobile. And I am Grant, who you were introduced to earlier, but uh, I am the founder and CEO of G. Skinner. And while I may not be particularly creative about naming companies, uh, <laughs> I do love uh, both design and code. And I particularly love the sort of gooey middle in between those two things. So, you know who we are. What are we going to be talking about? Well, as I mentioned in the keynote, a couple of months ago, the Flutter team, team came to us and they said, hey, we'd really love to have you build a series of vignettes that kind of show off the beautiful things that you can do with Flutter. The last couple of years in Flutter have been sort of spent proving that you could build real functional applications on top of the platform. And they wanted us to play around with making things that were just really delightful instead. Yeah, and in short, they wanted us to explore how Flutter could empower designer and developers um, to add the sparkle um, that makes an app more de delightful to use. So we did that by creating a collection of 18 vignettes, um, focused explorations into um, UI concepts. And so before we get started, I'd like to really quickly show you a few of the vignettes just running live on my phone. Okay, so I'm not going to show them all to you because that would basically be our 20 minutes. Um, but we ranged from the very like practical and very uh, sort of simple, like just good form implementation to things that were maybe a little bit more silly or novel. Uh, so our dog, <laughs> dog toy ordering form. My favorite part of this one is if you decide to order no dog, no, yeah. <laughs> if you order no dog, they just, go, yeah, you order no balls, <laughs> the, uh, the dog decides to leave. Um, to things like just really nice parallax list implementations uh, using 2.5D. To uh, just nice uh, transitions like this one that incorporate 3D elements. And, you know, kind of fun stuff like novel pull to refresh implementations. And, of course, our titular Sparkle Party, which is really just there to be fun and silly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with lots of different ways that you can waste time with Sparkles. <laughs> so, uh, again, you can check out the other ones at flutter.gskinner.com, uh, but let's jump back to the slides. There we go. <laughs> so we will be talking about, uh, so, okay, once we finish this, finish working on the vignettes, they asked us to come here and give a talk about the vignettes, specifically about the process of creating the vignettes. And so that's how we wound up on this stage right now. Um, but we don't want to talk about all of the vignettes. We want to really focus it down so that we can you know, go into a little bit more depth. And so for that, we're going to focus on a single vignette, this uh, mindfulness uh, onboarding screen with a GUI page transition. Yeah, and luckily, we're not going to talk about the code much today, but we're going to focus on the process that we used to bring it from concept to reality. Because the traditional model where designers just 
toast comms over the wall to a developer really doesn't work here. It makes good design expensive, which it shouldn't be. Instead, yeah. what you need is an agile approach where developers contribute to concepts, designers are like deeply involved in production, and uh, no one is afraid to iterate back on the idea as you progress. We found that Flutter makes this whole process really easy. And um, I'll just take that over, yeah. <laughs> so the first thing I did was research. In the beginning of this project, I was not very familiar with Flutter and needed to understand this platform that I was going to work with. But this is often a very difficult thing for designers because the only thing available is technical information that looks like a new language to me. So I had to rely on our developers to translate it for me. However, Flutter made it easy. So their website and the community have created tons of great resources that are relatively designer friendly. And one thing that I found really helpful was those Flutter, Flutter widget of the week videos. So in each video, they cover a specific widget, um, and most of those videos are less than two minutes. So I was able to go through all 60 of them in a few hours, and I also took notes on them as I went through so I can reference back to as I design. And once I got a solid understanding of the platform, um, I started thinking about what kind of sparkly experiences I could build with it. <laughs> and we'd like to start with low fidelity approaches to discover design issues in this early stage of our process and also quickly iterate on an idea. And one of the lowest effort ways to um, explore an idea is just to talk about it in context of good reference materials. So our whole team is always on the lookout for um, interesting and inspiring examples that we can share in one of our Slack channels called hashtag inspired. Um, and part of my daily routine is also collecting those references and um, yeah, collecting them into my Pinterest board. Um, so when a project like this comes up, I have this collection of cool inspirations that I can go to and easily pull things out of it. And you can just ignore the wedding. Yeah, because <laughs> I am recently got engaged, so <laughs> it's been one of my biggest <laughs> interests <laughs> these days. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And one of the themes that kept coming up in our conversation was this GUI animation. So everyone really loved this idea. And we're all like, yes, let's take a dive into this. <laughs> and at this point, I went back to Grant to do a quick sanity check and make sure this idea is feasible in Flutter. Yeah, so I took a quick look at the docs and confirmed that, yeah, we can draw Bezier curves and we can basically inject them anywhere we want in the UI. So looks good. We're good to go. <laughs> Great. <laughs> uh, so now that we know this idea will be feasible in Flutter, um, I start developing an idea. I just make a bunch of sketches and use those sketches to have a conversation with the developers and the client to get their additional feedback from them and also further refine the concept at this stage. And we eventually settled on this idea of an onboarding screen for a mindfulness app because onboarding experience is important because it teaches you how to use the app but users often find it annoying and just skip through it. So by making it more fun and noble, um, we hope that they spend more time on this onboarding experience and maybe even read the content. So uh, once we're happy with the overall concept, I developed the sketch into wireframes to figure out details like sizing, position, and the order of elements. And finally, I made a quick low fidelity motion comp in After Effects. I like to do this in this early stage of the process because motion can have a major impact on how things will fit together. So yeah, and before we go any further with design, we want to prove it can actually build in Flutter. 
So Grant is going to take it over. He's going to talk about all the fun technical stuff. So at this point, uh, I get to jump in and take the idea and start proving out that, yes, this is all going to work out the way that we expect it to. And the way I like to do this is by first breaking the concept down, identify any specific challenges or uh, areas that we aren't so sure are going to work out well, then take those um, problems and research solutions that I think might work for them, and you know, really dig into the API, get an idea of how it might work. Um, Flutter is really cool in that it usually gives you like two or three or maybe a dozen ways of solving every problem. And that means that you really benefit from doing this upfront research instead of kind of following one path before you understand them all. The last thing that I like to do is take those solutions and like really prove them. So basically doing the absolute bare minimum amount of work that I have to do to show that it's going to work. So, you know, I'm a developer, I'm lazy. The less work I can do to get my job done, the happier I am. So for this specific vignette, I identified sort of four challenges that I was going to have to solve. One of them was the actual GUI physics, making things just really feel right. The next was drawing these curvy edges. Finally, well, not finally, then I'd have to actually clip or mask the UI once I got those curves drawing. And finally, I'd need the actual interaction to work, right? I had to, had to take this from something that you could just play with to something that did something, that actually initiated a transition. So before I could get started with really anything, I needed sort of a harness that I could work within. And I figured, okay, I'll use custom painter with canvas that I can draw whatever I want on screen. I'll wrap that all in a gesture recognizer, which will give me contextual touch input. And it's pretty much all I need to get started. In my mind, every great visual experiment starts with a single red dot on the screen. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time, and that's where I always start pretty much. Uh, it's basically like the hello world of computer graphics. So once I have one dot, I can draw lots of dots. Once I draw lots of dots, I can start actually interacting with a dot. So in this case, just dragging a single dot around. Once I can drag a single dot, I can drag multiple dots. And in this case, I can vary the amount of force that I'm applying on each dot based on how far away it is from the touch point. So this is a pretty good starting point. Now I can tackle my actual problems. So the first thing I want to do is GUI physics. And in my research phase, I had identified this API called Spring Simulation. And this is mostly designed for handling the sort of elastic response that you see in things like Overscroll. But I thought, eh, it kind of gives me what I want. Maybe I can sort of bend it and twist it and make it do what I need. So I wired it in, and I wasn't super happy with the result. And so, but I figured, hey, I'll take it back to Yoon, see what she says. And I said, this is too spiky and it has mechanical looking, and we should get rid of that. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe not. Maybe we're you know, going to go back to the drawing board. I mean, this is exactly why we do these quick spikes, is that we can, we can find these things that don't work really early on. So literally, in my case, going back to the drawing board, um, one of the things that I've learned from my designers is to really appreciate how quick and easy it is to iterate on an, on an idea on paper. I mean, my drawings definitely aren't as pretty as Yoon's, but they do what I need them to do. So I had this idea of using three forces in conjunction, one that was pulling points towards the touch point, one that was pulling all the points towards their neighbors, and then a third weaker force that was always pulling the points back towards where the side that they came from. And I thought this should work fairly well. So I translated it into code and uh, gave it a quick test. And you know, I'm pretty happy with that. So again, let's see what Yoon says. And I gave it a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> so good, we can proceed from there. So the next problem is, how do I draw curvy edges? Again, drew some things out. My initial idea was, oh, I'll just draw Bezier curves through the points. And the more I drew this, the more I realized it was going to be really complex to do. And I thought I wouldn't really get the results that I was hoping for. It wasn't very smooth. So I had this other idea of instead of drawing through the points, I would just use the points as the 
control points for my Bezier curves. So using quadratic Bezier curves and just using them as a control point. <clears> that seemed like it would work. Again, do a quick code test. And it looked OK, but can we make it more smoother and a little bit more elastic? Yeah, and so the cool thing about Flutter is that you and I were able to just sit down together. We could tweak some numbers here, you know, do a little adjustment there. And at the end of the day, we landed here. And I think we were both happy. Yes. <laughs> so that's two out of our four problems. Uh, the next one was clipping or masking, right? I didn't just want colored waves on the screen. I wanted to be revealing UIs on top of each other. And luckily, I had done my research up front. And I had identified this API called, or this uh, class called Custom Clipper. And basically, it just lets me feed a path in, and it'll uh, mask out any UI. And in researching it, I realized that it preferred size-independent values. And so building all of my previous spikes, I was able to build them all against a unit square, so values of 0 to 1 instead of using pixel values. And that meant that when it came time to test out Custom Clipper, I could just feed my existing path straight into it, and everything just worked. I didn't really have to do any, any additional work. So, you know, we're getting pretty close to the concept here. The last thing that I want to prove is that I can turn this into like a proper interaction. You know, just the ability to swipe and have it travel across the screen. And this one also turned out to be really easy. Thought about it a little bit, and what I decided on was once my motion passed a certain threshold that basically indicated that, yes, the user's intention was to swipe, all I do is flip my forces so that now I was pulling towards the opposite screen and just let my so-called physics take over and do its job. So it left this sort of explorable playfulness where the user could still mess around with it, but once they kind of gestured to me that, yes, I am doing a swipe, we take over and we finish off that gesture. So everything's working. We're, we're basically done, right? We're not really done, Grant. We have the most exciting part is left, which is making it pretty. So I take my sketches in on Illustrator along with reference materials and start making higher fidelity comps. This is where I get to explore, um, explore with colors and fonts and the layout. Um, it sometimes takes multiple iterations until um, I come up with a final design. But for this vignette, I was able to come up with what everyone liked pretty quickly. And with the static design finalized, I also create a final motion comp in After Effects so developers can reference what the end result should look like. So I hand off my final motion comp to developers, and they start, work, they start working with it. And this is where designers and developers need to collaborate closely in order to make a successful handoff. And for static design handoff, it's pretty easy. Um, I just upload my design file to a program called Abstract. And de de developers can just go to here and inspect color, phones, and positions. They can also copy um, text content directly from here, which is very convenient. So it seems like our developers really enjoy using it, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Makes things easy. <laughs> <clears throat> so beyond Abstract, uh, Flutter, oops, uh oh, now I'm kicking my mic around. Uh, Flutter also makes this part really simple. The like, compositional model that it uses means that it's really easy to create these effects as widgets and just build them against sample content. And then we can just hand them off, and whenever the real content is ready, we just plug it in. In fact, with this, uh, this particular vignette, I was able to build it up to this point using these simple content card widgets as our only content. And then I could hand it off to another developer who was able to integrate Yoon's designs really simply. But motion handoff is where things can get really tricky. So this travel, uh, Parallax Travel Cars vignette was the first one we worked on, and we learned a lot from it. So we're going to use this as 
um, to show our motion handle process. And we started out by tackling our usual toolbox, which includes a motion spec site made with Google site. So I exported all the keyframe information from my FFX file. This includes all the specific timing, position, and easing information that developers would need. So um, I hand this site over to developers, and they use this as a reference as they build. And as they make progress, um, I provide ongoing feedback by marking up storyboards like this and also adding comments directly to a video or having in-depth conversation in Slack like this. So our developers did a pretty good job in the motion and um, got us 90% of the way there, but it was still not quite what I was hoping for. So the left one, your left, yeah. The left one is my <laughs> final uh, motion comp, and the right one was what I got from the dev. And I know the difference is very subtle. The difference in the movement is very subtle, but I believe that tiny additional polish is what improves the overall user experience. So I could not and did not want to give up on that. <laughs> but with Flutter, we discovered that we could pretty much replace our usual toolbox with Hot Reload. So while we still do a handoff document for the, for the motion handoff, um, just being able to just sit down with developers in the same place, make changes together, and see the result in real time was a great benefit to me because it, 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 ena it enabled me to um, direct things to be how I want it. And also, especially when it comes to those like tiny details, it was a hundred times easier and faster um, to um, than trying it to do um, through bug tracking. So it allowed us to have really smooth and effective handoff process between um, designers and developers and also generate the lifeful outcome that we both satisfied with. Yeah, I mean, Hot Reload is amazing for designer-developer collaboration. It just smooths out the whole process. It makes it so much more relaxed and productive. Um, but it's just great for a developer in general. Uh, it's just a big accelerator. It means that you can try things faster, see results faster. I mean, it's probably one of my favorite features working with Flutter. Mm -hmm. Me too. <laughs> so we work together making, making it pretty. So I think we're done, right? <laughs> Mostly. <laughs> so before we go, uh, I just want to spend a little bit of time walking through a few things that we found that we kind of had fun playing with and encourage you to also check these things out and mess around with them. Uh, I'm going to show you some of the vignettes that use them so that if you want somewhere to get started, again, just go and grab a vignette, see how we did it, grab the code that's relevant, and play. So the first thing that's kind of tricky to find in Flutter, but is actually really easy to work with once you get it going, is 2.5D. You know, Flutter is mostly a 2D UI framework, but it does have uh, four by four matrices, which means that we can do perspective uh, transforms. And you have to do this a little bit manually because it's not built into the matrix right now, but you can basically just manually set this entry here to set the perspective transform and then you can rotate, transform, uh, translate, et cetera, on any axis that you want to get these kind of like pseudo 3D effects. And you can do it on any widget. So you can do it anywhere in your UI that you want. And we use that for the uh, ticket example that you've seen and, um, and this guy over here, the travel cards. Another thing that we kind of stumbled onto that we enjoyed using uh, is the single child render object widget, uh, or SCRO, as we have nicknamed it. The name is harder to pronounce than it is to actually use the widget. Uh, it's usually about the same number of characters to implement it as it is to write its actual name. Um, with, it basically lets you inject yourself into the rendering pipeline anywhere that you want, which is awesome. 
Uh, with like five or 10 lines of code, you can add a blend mode to anything you want. You can add cool things like full alpha transparency masking, right? So not just vector clipping. Um, we use it for this dark mode example that we put together. Uh, the full one has a number of different examples of how you can use it, as well as for blend modes in this uh, Indie 3D example. <clears throat> Uh, I wanted to mention Rive. I think that uh, formerly Flare, now Rive. Uh, I think it's one of the like che cheapest, easiest, lowest lift ways of adding that little bit of sparkle into your app. You can have a designer put things together, add a nice animation, and then you can control that animation from your code and integrate it directly into your widget tree. I don't want to talk too much about it because uh, the Rive guys are going to be giving a talk a little bit later on. Uh, we actually didn't use it very much because we kind of thought it was cheating, but uh, we did use it for this one vignette. <laughs> and finally, Canvas and Custom Painter, which we've <laughs> maybe overused. We really had fun with this. Uh, Canvas basically just lets you draw arbitrary vector graphics anywhere you want. Uh, so it's fantastic for doing things like data visualization. Um, but we also found these not really documented, but super useful methods in draw vertices and draw atlas. And we were able to use them to, for example, create a simple 3D engine that we can actually load in models and display and manipulate them. Uh, we can actually even do textured models, as well as uh, just seeing how many particles we could throw at the GPU. And we're pretty happy with the results. We got up to, I think, something like 50,000 on my iPhone. So, um, there's another way to just sort of enhance a UI in kind of a fun way. So I think that pretty much wraps us up. Uh, really appreciative of you sitting and listening. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, we really hope that you take some time and go and you know, download the source code and start messing around with the vignettes. Uh, if you build something wonderful, please come back and let us know. We'd love to see it. Yeah. So thanks for joining the Sparkle Party, and bye. <laughs> <laughs> thanks.